How's it going, everybody? This is MetaChomp. I'm Mike Muncatchy. And I'm Alex Muncatchy. And we welcome you to our wonderful podcast universe. It's a, it's a cinematic universe. It is. Because that's kind of the rage nowadays. It, it really it quite is. I mean, it's uh, we're trying to, you know, build out that franchise. Absolutely. Make so, things go global. And we're recording in a cardboard box in the middle of Hollywood. Yes. And today we have some really important things to talk about. We do. Also, we're only recording on one mic, so full disclosure, Alex and I's faces are only about a foot away from each other. It makes for very intimate conversation. Yeah, it's basically pillow talk. It I, is. I just feel like so snuggled up in here. <laughs> Um, this, so, bo- this box is getting hot, though, no doubt. It's definitely a hot box. Mm-hmm. Um, so today we're going to be talking about a few different things. Um, Alan, what do we got on the on the slate today? Well, as you know, there's the barrage of summer movies. And, I mean, there's just constant up trailers and trailers and finals trailer and then a final trailer after that. I think yeah. they're, they're all just completely full of shit. <laughs> trailers for trailers for trailers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then there's, like the, then there's like the three-second trailer in the trailer at the yeah. very beginning. And it's like, okay, great. You're spoiling the trailer by showing another trailer. And it just gets over, so overwhelming. I turn off the computer, turn off the air, turn off the power, and I just yeah. have to kind of quiet myself down. But even then, even then, though, when you're just cowered in your bedroom... Yeah under a table Mm -hmm. do you then you can still hear somebody else's phone playing the trailer of course and of course they start talking about have you seen the latest trailer and then they spoil the trailer for me there are teasers for teasers nowadays when does when does it end al it doesn't end i'm starting to feel like movies are possibly just trailers for for larger movies and and honestly as they expand (laughs) into larger universes yeah basically like the origin story is just a trailer so they can finally get along and then they can introduce more characters make (laughs) make hour and a half long trailers for these larger properties expand the universe and so on so it never actually ends it never it never ends no movie has a final conclusion anymore no. and we're we're completely used to it and i think kind of uh, kind of cool with it nowadays without a doubt um so this is metachomp so metachomp is a brand new thing that al and i are doing uh so we are really excited to be telling you about theories and concepts and themes in music video games uh, movies and and more, and we're going to just be sprinkling a little bit of that of that of that of that just that spice of just really great stuff mm. in every single. Oh, you smell that out? Oh, I do. It's, it's simmering. It's it the, is. We're just simmering. It's just, just you and it, I. It, it's it's percolating. It's a little bit. It's. Oh. I mean, it's kind of. I can tell that there's some. It mm. might be fumigation. I think. I'm not sure. Can you can you just uh, dash in li- just a little bit of garlic? Okay. Oh, uh, uh, perfect. Okay. Oh, uh, that's excellent. All right. Now we're now we got now, now we, we got. We got a, you know, just like Carl Weathers said in Arrested Development, we got a, we got a stew going. <laughs> so, um, so summer blockbuster movies. Al, what's uh, what's coming out this year? I mean, basically, as you can tell, with Disney is going all in. Uh, yeah. They've captured every single market, uh, and it's kind of a monopoly. Uh, and um, so you have your Marvel, you got your uh, Lucasfilm. And they just, they want all the money. Yeah, they do want all the money. And uh, (laughs) so... Disney owns the world. Disney has just, they, you know, they're going to have movies fighting up against each other. They don't care, right? There's going to be an audience. They don't care if it's one person accidentally walking to the wrong theater. They're going to find a way to get those cheeks into seats. So, you know. (laughs) Cheeks and seats? (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, when it comes down to it, uh, we got Solo, which is going to be the origin story for Han Solo. Let's talk about that. Yeah. because I've, I've seen a couple trailers now for Solo, mm-hmm. and in the original trailer, I felt like his voice just didn't really sound like... It didn't sound like our good old Harrison mm-hmm. Harrison Ford. Like, I don't think it sounded like our boy. And I don't... It's interesting enough uh, to hear it, and especially when you see these other trailers come out, too. Like, they've had so many different uh, opportunities to really convey, this is the man. This is a young Harrison Ford. I mean, yeah. you. It's not like you know. It's not like one of those things where you're like you're you have a comic book character and oh he's black or he's whatever right or he's has a different cadence. He's from the south or yeah. something. It's like there's a specific image associated with Han Solo. Right. And Harrison Ford captured that essence. He's made a very specific. Um, personification of this guy, yeah. this bounty hunter, right? This crazy smuggler, this guy who's on the run, you know, who's just kind of like this charming dude who kind of gets himself into bad situations. And he has a very specific cadence, the way yeah. he talks, the way he looks. I completely agree. And this guy just doesn't have it. He uh, does yeah. not have it. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's like, if you're going to go, if you're going to make this origin story about a character that is so revered, mm-hmm. like Han Solo, you should try to capture just a small percentage of that essence. Well, well and doesn't he just 
I don't know, like Han Solo has such a swagger to him. Uh, he does. And I feel like Harrison Ford brought that partially because of his disinterest in science fiction overall. Yeah. He like he was like, I only care enough just to get this done. It's it's funny how like so much of the original Star Wars cast, like Alec Guinness, Alec Guinness as uh, Obi Wan. Yeah, I don't think he, he I don't despised. Yeah, he despised. He hated Obi Wan. He hated the whole idea. He thought it was when he walked around and everyone was wearing cloaks and there's these prosthetics and there's just like he thought it was the most ridiculous thing ever. But he was like, I'll just do it. I'll do it for the paycheck kind of thing. And he ended up being like the best you know, the best kind of person, right? The most trustworthy. He felt like he gave his heart and soul. Yeah. And he was the perfect way of grounding the universe. And also, isn't it amazing to think that you and McGregor will one day become Alec Guinness? It's just really cool. It's, am- just- it's amazing how that works. You <laughs> and know? we're just wa- watching that origin story uh, play out. You know, without a doubt. And I, I guess that, you know, with Solo, it's just, it's a, it's a frustrating situation because I think he looks like, he looks like, it's a very poor Harrison Ford, but a very good, um, Jack Nicholson. I think he oh, looks he, so he much like Jack Nicholson. Jack. He is a Jack and Nicholson. And it's funny because you wouldn't get those two confused no. at any point, even no. accidentally. I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm still, after the second trailer dropped, I, I thought, you know, I, can, I might be able to get into this. I hopefully will be able to suspend my yeah. disbelief because no matter what, this character is not going to be. It's it's not going to be Harrison Ford. It's going to be a different take on the character. And personally, I probably would have chosen one of the other actors, like the guy who did Baby Driver, to be yeah. Harrison Ford, mm-hmm. who's actually got the voice down. He's he's still got the look. But there was that one. There was the one guy on YouTube that everyone knows. I can't think of the guy's name. Yeah. who was like yeah, the he, audition tape uh, was I mean, released. He admittedly, like he did an amazing Harrison Ford job. I guess I don't know of him as an actor. I know he's done some stuff in acting. I know he's not that well known. Yeah. Nor is he like the greatest actor. And I guess like that's the point where you're like, okay, he sounds like Harrison Ford. He can act like him, do the mannerisms, but not a great actor. And I can get I get why they kind of they didn't choose him. But to go so far out of your way to get this guy who. You know, I guess if you're, if all else fails, he has to be charming. Yes. He has to be charismatic because yeah. Harrison Ford oozes charisma. Like he, like back in the original Star Wars, like he was the dude that everyone. I mean, admittedly, maybe it's just me, but I wanted to be Harrison Ford. I wanted to be Han Solo. I wanted to be that, like, because he's like the cool L, everything. L, you please. know, I mean, you've got your blaster right now on your hip. You are, you are Han Solo. Well, all men have blasters, but that's what has the point. It's very true. Um, and I think that's that's the ultimately like what I I found to be most fascinating. He wasn't like this perfect, you know, goody two shoes, uh, like 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 Luke Skywalker. He was this guy who had kind of a chip on his shoulder, didn't care, it was kind of reckless, and wanted to go in and out. And I think that's a cool character is a it's a very muddy gray character that is fascinating to me yes he is more he's definitely morally gray he's an opportunistic yes. materialistic uh kind of a coward who then finally is able to like gather his uh gather his marbles and and do the right thing at the very end to basically help save the entire galaxy mm-hmm. um i'm a little bit concerned by the film but then again i'd like to pose this question what um what film do you think does a younger version of an older character well like can you think of one movie where there's a young version of the older character and it's actually executed correctly because I, I actually can't really think I of it I thought the little girl who played Wonder Woman I thought her as a little girl <sighs> yes was actually weirdly enough I thought she was like like she's adorable but she's like you can see like there's a little like there's, like, there's the fight in her oh she's great but I feel like in a way like I feel like the way she approached it like she was just like, a normal kid she wasn't annoying right. she was super passionate she like it felt like very I don't know maybe it's just me but I felt like I was very attached to her I felt like she had a really great aura around her where she's just like okay this mm-hmm. is this is her her you know her stick she is unique yes. and she's adventurous and it, she didn't they didn't try to you know force feed uh, her lines that, that you know came off too hammy like with Anakin Skywalker obviously that's the poster child for bad child but, actors but going back to Wonder Woman she also <laughs> yeah. yeah because you know Jake Waters can just last forever is that Jake Walker Waters Jake Hill Jake Hill or Jake, I don't know, Waters? Uh, <laughs> Who knows? Uh, uh, Justin, Dustin, uh, uh, whoever it is, he's, yeah. he's grown up and he's Jake, had some issues. I was going to say Jake Lloyd. Is it Jake, Jake Lloyd? Jake Lloyd, Jake Lloyd. There you go. Yeah, the other guy or the, other guy, the other guy was Preston Waters, who played the kid on Blank Check and has since grown up to have a whole bunch of allegations. And then and there's Precious, charges. which is a totally different movie. Precious is entirely different, although it's, I thought she w- she would have been a great Han Solo. She would have been. She would have um, rocked that. But when I, when I think of the young uh, Wonder Woman, I thought she, she also did a really good job job 
of setting the idea of the character already being fierce and yes. courageous. She was well cast and also had enough screen time. When I think of another good origin character, it would definitely be, definitely be the young Bruce Wayne yes. from the beginning of Batman versus I agree. Superman. <laughs> Oh, I know there's Superman. <laughs> That's hilarious. Just in the slow mo, the no, oh, when the music is playing and you see yeah. the you see the like the gun being discharged and the. Ex- I thought you were talking about the young Bruce Wayne from from <laughs> freaking the Dark Knight trilogy. No, he he, he it was well done too. Like, uh, and, he, and those are great. Those flashback sequences are like, so well. Spoiler: done. When he lost his parents. <laughs> <laughs> In case no anybody just does not know that already. Yeah, yeah. Batman is person is probably the person most in, <laughs> most in need of therapy in the history of people because like he's like, oh, my parents are gone. I'm going to become a bat and fight crime. It's, it's like Edge of Tomorrow, but he just keeps failing. He hey, can never stop can, his parents getting killed. Can we talk about Batman a little bit? Like, I'd like to talk about just the character of Batman man and how it seems like he doesn't care about any other place than gotham Mm -hmm. like no other no other city matters to him he's all gotham all the time except except when he makes a little like a little round trip to berlin or where where, where did he go Uh, no he went to uh china for a sequence in the dark night he did go to china that's right yeah and it was just like a little vacation and it was (laughs) all all of a sudden appeared back uh in, in gotham yeah, yeah, I mean, he, um, his character is is fascinating, and I think, uh, you know, he has, um, he just had a lot of different. Everyone has a different idea, just a general feeling, an emotional arc, and it's like we all know the story of Batman. We all know his origins. We know how he goes through, how he, you know, adopts the bat signal. You know, all the stuff that goes on with that. And uh, what are your thoughts on, say, the recasting of Batman for the newest Batman movie? Well, who are we settling on? Because Jake Jelly was one of the he's people still, in the running. I know he's still in the running. And with Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker. That it, would be interesting. But I've also heard that in the extended universe for the DC films, like for the Joker origin story, which is where a Joaquin... Like, how does it go... How does the Joker turn from Joaquin Phoenix into Jared Leto? Like, that's going to be a really interesting I mean, thing. Are they, are they going... I mean, I guess they, at this point it's too late, but I mean, are they going for true canon with Suicide Squad? Is it truly like a canon situation? Or are they, they, they going to scrap it? Is it going to be like a... They a, might scrap it. Because yeah. in, my, in my opinion, I did not... Like, well, I guess they can't because they just with Harley Quinn and oh yeah, uh, that, that, because people loved her. Well, they loved her, and there's already her own standalone movie that's coming out. Oh yeah, and, and Sirens, right? And the Sirens, and they have um, what's her name that played Harley Quinn in Suicide Squad? Oh yeah, uh, uh, oh my god, uh, it's <laughs> oh my god. This is bad. Um, we, we act like we don't know. We're gonna just <laughs> let's let's just cut this out. <laughs> but it's 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 funny because it's like you know like so like they're already they're bringing Mar- Marco these. Robbie. There you go. Uh, I just had to search through a different folder in my mind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and um, you know it's amazing to me that like so they they're gonna bring her back in. They're gonna basically what I hear it is they're gonna bring back like, the same cosmetic look and everything of what she you know how she oh, is. Oh, she's great. But Har- Harley Quinn's always been. She was a character created for the animated series and as this per, this love interest yeah. sort of a one way love interest with the Joker always vying for his attention was she I, always hypersexualized in the animated series she was well I mean she wore pretty much like a onesie like she wasn't anywhere she near like sexualized a, like a traditional like a Harlequin freaking like yeah a, she, she looked like an actual an actual Harley Quinn like she, she had a she full she red and black suit. she wasn't rocking the booty shorts or anything like that you know not the so. booty shorts although I mean I think the costume decision was very it was very tasteful um, <laughs> <laughs> I think those the like her look now represents closer to what characters do when they're cosplaying as Harley yeah it, like at, at Comic Con and whatnot. like you know as cosplayers like we're gonna take a character and we're gonna Halloween costume it so like women's costumes that are like vampire it's like oh it's a vampire with with assless chaps <laughs> or like yeah. with, with super low cut or like it's, and, it's impressive i mean i it certainly is impressive but, but, but either, I, I, i'm impressed primarily because this the whole dc universe is it is on by i mean it, they made they made money they made a lot of money yeah and with so they're not commercial failures they're critical failures um but uh i know that wonder woman definitely set them somewhat on the right path that someone would even argue that wonder woman wasn't the greatest movie i thought it was enjoyable i i, didn't, I, didn't, I adore I, it i loved wonder woman most of it um i think there were parts that obviously are, are not gonna be perfect but it was a great first step into the right direction i DC. i i 
It had, felt very refreshing. It felt refreshing. Also, I really, really felt a sense of loss. And that's one thing that I think is missing in superhero films. Like for all the 17 Marvel movies that have yeah. come out, I have never once really felt loss except for spoilers when something happens to Groot. <laughs> Yeah, that's at the true. end, at the end I mean, of Guardians, part, part or, of part of that, yeah, part of the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, I you're right. I think of like, you know, when uh, Peter Parker's uncle dies. Yeah, you know, and I mean that was in Spider Man, not before before the Cinematic Universe. That was probably the last time from a, that a Marvel movie really tugged at my heartstrings, right? And yeah. made me feel a certain way, you know. But that's also because Tobey Maguire, like, love him or hate him. Dude's talented, you know, and he he does the crying face. Like, you know, Denzel Washington has like the, the, the tremble lip yeah. that he does when he gets really, really emotional. Yeah, he's got the trembling little... Uh, and like, then like Toby McGuire, like his entire eyeball gets soaked with tears. And it's yeah. like, it's a specific look yeah. that he gives across. And it's hard to like not empathize with his situation. He too. either looks really sad or like really angry. Like, <laughs> yeah. Toby, And if you've ever seen the movie Brothers, you know that Tobey Maguire can be really angry looking. And he can pull that off. He can go between the two different extremes uh, flawlessly it's and true. effortlessly. It makes me question what his default mode is. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, <laughs> it's definitely emo. That's whatever. He's listening to Bright Eyes nonstop every day. He's definitely not an apologist. He's an apologist for his character in Spider-Man 3. But it's, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's coming out. I mean, there's obviously the Avengers um, and Disney's like, Disney's just happily just promoting all of these, like as if they're not like this master hand at these, all these properties. Oh, it yeah. It cracks me up too. They actually, they, I mean, I, I almost, I almost wonder at one point, are they actually going to make like a super extended, extended universe where they just combine Lucasfilm with Marvel? Yeah. At this point, I feel like they should just, it's like, yeah. why not? Battle the, Royale. Oh yeah. It's like <laughs> the, the, uh, the Avengers has new team members and they are the Incredibles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's amazing, and and then Incredibles two, the, that trailer dropped a couple of days ago, the yeah. newest one, and it is, I mean, it's hard to come back. I mean, the last Avengers, came, uh, last Incredibles came out in two thousand and what two, two or three? Uh, yeah, it was it was a very long time ago. So that's a lot. It's a long time. That's a lot of Cars uh, sequels. A lot of car, a lot of sequels overall. It's kind of yeah. when, in my opinion, Pixar started to lose their way. I feel yeah. I feel like it, Pixar's coming back with movies like Inside Out. Um, but we had, we, had, we had Toy Story three. Uh, that was uh, that was in, in, enjoyable. I Monsters thought it was Un- good. Monsters University was okay, but it was like I guess my question to you is that I mean, a lot of these sequels it felt like like Pixar like I know that they they're kind of like Jim Carrey in that regard where they like they don't like to do You're sequels. Right. Actually, you don't even need to explain. I don't <laughs> just don't even explain. It. They're Ca- just like Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey basically said that like he won't even sign up to do a sequel to a movie uh, unless he can t- genuinely. This was an old saying that he did. Obviously, that was before like Dumb and Dumber Two and all that stuff. Ace but Ventura it was, Two. Well, Ace Ventura Two was the only sequel that he's done. Yeah, and that's what's amazing is that like he's never been one to make sequels because it never feels like it's like an, an organic direction that can just go. And he doesn't like the idea of it going purely off of a capitalistic kind of mentality, which is yeah. kind of crazy for him. And he has enough money to float that as I, well. I actually feel like sequels sequels make a lot of sense if the story it has room for one because yeah. it's different from like, when you have a cinematic universe, it's the equivalent of television where ev like no story actually has a beginning and no story has a true end yeah. because there's always a looming threat and after credit sequence that shows wait, but wait, there's more it's a cliffhanger. You know, it's like um, a couple of years ago, I, I knew, I, I know that uh, there was going to be an Avengers infinity war one and then an Avengers Infinity War uh, or Infinity War Part Two. Infinity War is identical to the other. They're the they, same. They, thing. they never. There's never a full conclusion. No, not not ever. Unless you buy the season pass. It's very true, and it's very expensive. <laughs> um, but that's how. That's kind of how we feel about those uh, like uh, superhero film films um, overall. You like, know what? That kills it though. Because well, that, yeah. that kills it because guess what? What happens? And this is probably the the biggest downfall to a larger property. Tell me. There are no stakes. No stakes. So, like, if you have a character, you build them up, you flesh them out, you make them likable or whatnot. Or maybe you don't even bother. They're just, like, cardboard cutout characters, you know, following a specific trope. Um, But you know they're well-liked. And you know that they're, you know, charismatic enough that they're probably not going to be killed off anytime soon. Right. Or if they do die, they always come back. Yeah. So if you have like these characters that are like, especially superhero movies, where they just can't be killed, or if they get killed by one thing, there's always one thing to bring them back. 
then there's no stakes. And I feel like that's a, a big issue for me because that that if you really try to build the emotional connection that I'm supposed to share with these characters, if you try to make them feel like they're really up against the ultimate odd, the ultimate baddie, right. you know, Thanos and all that stuff too as well. Like, how do you do that? How do you d- develop this incredible connection with these characters if you know that generally they will always find a way to come back? Right, because the Avengers is really curious because they they call themselves the Avengers, but they're only avenging the one character who was their like leader from yeah. I don't even know I don't even care who he who, who he really is. I'm sure if I watched Agents of Shield, I would care a lot more but about the, him. It's it's different though from like what TV series like you mentioned that there's kind of like the idea of having this continuing story that kind of folds out over a long period of time. Right, and TV series though as we all know with some of our favorite ones like Walking Dead or Game of Thrones and whatnot like there's always going to be characters and you know what when they die they die yeah they're gone so like TV unless they series, turn into a White Walker which uh, that's you know true. spoilers for the last season of Game of Thrones so like and that's kind of my thing is that like you know TV series like you know they'll, they'll find a way like if the, you know what it's going to be like Dark Souls or Demon Souls, like the equivalent, right? Where like, hey, if you die, you die. Yeah. And it becomes, it's like everything is on brutal difficulty and you won't have any response. Yeah. And, um, right. You're right though. Nowadays, a lot of characters, they just respawn. It reminds me, it's like, what is it? Simpsons. Simpsons, what is it called? The Simpsons episode. Um, there's actually a term for it. But it's like a full reset. Yeah, you're right. Where, where everything, the world could explode in a single episode of The Simpsons, but the very next episode, everything goes back to normal. Or, so Ke- or Kenny dies in every episode of South yes, Park. Yes, and it comes they, back. And it comes back. And we all just agree to it. We all understand like that, that you know, it's not, it's not going to be serialized. It's not going to be continued. You're not going to propel or perpetuate a specific scenario, and it goes on for a longer period of time, unless they do like part one, part two, part three, or something like that, too, as well. And a lot of it's money-driven. It's yeah. like, oh, this is a character that people like so you can't kill this character because they have to be protected by you know just a quote Mahler who is a great YouTuber and does a great great breakdowns of movies and video games um, plot armor basically they're the only people who cannot be hurt or killed but every but people um, beside them are dropping like flies non-essential characters that brings to me also the next point here is now when it comes down to these movies especially comic movies and Marvel movies and whatnot basically now that's synonymous because DC is just kind of, you know, they're, they're writing it, they're writing a certain way. If they're going to follow the money I know that the, uh, they just hired the first black female director for, uh, the Harley Quinn movie, uh, which is really, really cool. I think they're going to go and they're going to have it written by women. They're going to direct by women. Like I love like Mad Max Fury Road. Like, have you seen that? Like all of their, their entire, like the crew, so much of the crew, it's just these, this random older ladies. And they have like these crazy ideas, this super yeah. like burning man style, like gear. And the, the, the guy with the guitar with the shooting flames, like there's just one woman who's just like, you know, basically it's just hilarious. It's like, you just, you'd not expect her to, to talk. And she, in, 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 a, in a way, she's like, you know what? This would be just badass. Let's go for kick ass. So like, right. and I love, I love that. But my biggest thing is with these movies, like action movies and whatnot, not what is your thoughts on the idea of a character fighting cgi oh i feel like it's immediate like it's the stuff that ages the worst yeah. when it comes to like if you look at aliens you yeah. know and compare that to any fight sequence from like an uh like a newer film featuring cgi yeah. a cgi fight you see the practical effects and they will forever look photorealistic because right. they are real they're the best action is the stuff that happens in the lens i feel like cgi there's always there's always a lack of the real connection of someone like throwing a fist and connecting it with nothing like the, because it's all digitally manipulated and then yeah. at, at the end of the day things don't have a weight that they should in the, the real world which is why in jurassic park those special effects have also aged so well. Yes, it's because I agree. Like they're complete. Like they're practical. And when, like when the G, like when that Wrangler's um, like roof was shattered, which was an accident, the T Rex looked photorealistic, and it always, it yeah. always will. Um, uh, so I'm against. Uh, I feel like CGI, and a lot of people have said this: CGI should only be used as a last resort if practical effects simply are not possible, or or, or are not practical to be used. Uh, in in a certain circumstance, I agree, and I think like Spielberg mentioned before, like I mean that with Jurassic Park, the original, like if there was a full shot where you had to basically had this thing moving or, or chasing after you, he would only use it like during like the uh, the night, and then obviously the one shot, a couple of shots during the day. Yeah, but he would try to really make it so if he could mask it by the natural environment, he knew that even then, even with the cutting edge technology that they had going there, he wanted to minimize that because I think he knew. 
in some weird way that, that it would age the film. And yeah. um, like, there's obviously all the shots of like the uh, the the T Rex, uh, the prosthetic that was made by um, Stan Winston. Stan Winston. Yeah. And he, I mean, they were they're patting it down because it would get the shakes because the sensors would get you know drowned up with the rain and it yeah. hit the shakes and they'd be slapping with towels. Right. And but the crew members were terrified when they did this because like. This is a full size T Rex right. and it looks photorealistic. So if it scares the crew members, it's the same thing that with like with Predator or when you know the guy that played with Predator or this the guy who got into the the, the xenomorph costume. Like pro, pro, you know, if, even if you scare the crew and you're filming this and you design it from scratch, like it helps you push you into the into the, the, the movie. It makes you feel like you're connecting with something. My biggest pet peeve is when a movie follows its own rules, it has really great practical looking effects fire has a great costume department you know all that stuff but then at the very end like the last the final battle where they just decide to go ape shit right with cg yeah and it just it's like what happened because then you have now you have characters that are not going to die because they're already established that there's no stakes to it because they'll probably come back later fighting against things fighting against cg that is just and besides not aging not you know, not aging well it also brings into the fact that like I don't. It Wait, doesn't. I, I enjoyed the end of Jurassic World. I actually, I, I actually really dug that fight. That fight. Scene. I, I did too. It was like a WrestleMania. Yeah, I mean, and obviously, I'm not going to be one of those people that sits on a, you know, stands on a, on a podium and, and says that, that CG doesn't belong in movies. I think CG can be done to a tremendous effect, and we've yeah. gotten better and better. But I feel like there are limitations, and working within the limit, limitations prevents one movie to looking like a like a Michael Bay movie. You know, I think that's a huge deal. Yeah, and and CG sh- and any practical or any effect of any sort should always be used to serve the story. If yes. it doesn't do anything to enhance the story, take it out. Um, which is why the most successful movies are the use CG in a really smart way that people don't notice. Like movies like The Matrix um, and uh, and a lot of Martin Scorsese. Right. Lawrence, Lawrence Fishburne was entirely CG. Yeah, he's entirely CG. Um, and impressive. it was really incredible that the, the uh, that, that uh, who was it? Uh, Preston Waters was able to <laughs> play, yeah, <right. laughs> play yeah, Lawrence and Fishburne. Amazing. And then they had a bunch of lookalikes for that sequence when he's just all those all those clones are fighting him in that that part that the park. Oh yeah, that's a, uh, the clones Tons. in the park. That is the best ver- that that is the best best way to express. Uh, you might want to have motion captured people, or at least like human actors, as some of these people, because it was it was a it's a hill. It has aged incredibly poorly. Yeah. Now, you guys, I hate to say it, but we are actually out of time. We're gonna have to wrap up wrap up this episode. Yeah. However, this has been the first of our podcast series. We're going to have a lot more meta child coming your way. And Alex, where can we find you online? Where can we find, what are you, what are you doing? What kind of uh, uh, handles? Yeah. J date farmers only Great. Uh, Tinder. You I know, mean, those no. city folk just don't get it. <laughs> city folk <laughs> Just don't get it. But yeah. Metachop.com. That's going to be our, our main uh, way of getting to us. And obviously uh, we're always looking forward to any suggestions and things that might be on your mind as well. Yeah. So yeah, please, uh, please follow us there. We're going to be releasing this podcast on a regular basis, yes. and we'll have another episode where we'll talk a little bit more in depth about themes, mm-hmm. um, as well as the rest of the summer movies coming out in 2018. Yes. Can you believe it's 2018? It's incredible. We're living in the future. We, we should have flying cars. We, we, well, I guess if you find a really good ramp, you. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Unlock, unlock, uh, unlock moon physics. You know, for the cheat code. Oh my god! Yeah, San Francisco rush. Yeah, always. Rush. Rush. (laughs) Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.